there everybody, welcome to the split board episode. Neil's Gear Room. Live from Northern Japan, this, this is S-Log -Log with Neil Hartman. The definition of split. Verb, used with object, split. To divide or separate from end to end or into layers, to split a log in two. To separate by cutting, chopping, etc. Usually lengthwise, to split a piece from a block. To divide, break, or part lengthwise, the board split in half. The group of children split up into two teams. We'll split up here and meet later. I believe the very first patent for a split board was in 1990, and soon thereafter, we started to see split boards appear in magazines and videos. I got a new split board, the Field Earth S1. I'm so excited, I had to make the whole episode about split boards. When it comes to split boarding, you'll be spending 90% of your time hiking uphill, 5% of your time messing with gear, and 5% of your time riding downhill. Learn to embrace the uphill as part of the split boarding experience and you'll never have a bad day. Split boarding was born in the Bach country, and many riders seek the solitude and connection with the outdoors that only the back country can provide. Plus, it helps to get away from the lift lines and crowds that are found on patrolled terrain. However, backcountry splitboarding presents many, many unique challenges and dangers, avalanches, exposure, variable weather, fatigue, getting lost, dehydration, and should only be undertaken if all of the following conditions are met. You have completed the appropriate training, avalanche slash snow safety, first aid, you have the proper gear, beacon, shovel, probe, and know how to use it you have other qualified and trustworthy riders to adventure with, never enter the backcountry solo. You understand the conditions and terrain you will be traveling if you plan to venture out of bounds. Please review how to get started with backcountry snowboarding to make sure you understand the associated dangers and how to mitigate them. And remember, the backcountry is not a free-for-all and should be accessed responsibly and respectfully. Yes, you need to access the backcountry responsibly, no matter what tool you use, whether it's snowshoes, or a splitboard, or a snowmobile, whatever. Hey, we had a lot of snow this week here in Hokkaido. It's been crazy deep. I'm looking forward to introducing my new split board to you on this episode. This is Neil Hartman's S-Log. It's all about the snow. snow, snow. Right now, you're watching S-Blog, only on YouTube, featuring Neil Hartman. And friends, keep it locked. I present to you my split board lineup. Let's take a walk down memory lane. These are snowshoes. This is what people used to walk through deep snow back in the day. These are modern MSR Lightning Ascent snowshoes. Snowshoes suck. No, 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 well, they don't really suck. They're, they're great, they'll help you get around in deep snow. The split board is the premium tool for climbing the split board. Burton, handmade split board. This was my very first split board. Burton Supermodel 74. I really loved the Burton Supermodels back in the day. And I took one and had it cut and turned into a split board. Handmade. I'm not sure about the order these came out in, but I remember this board, custom split board. This had the Burton split board binding system that they developed and I think they only sold it for a couple of years. It was, uh, it was troublesome. This is the Burton Freebird. The naming was spectacular on this board. Really good job. Unfortunately, the riding experience with this board here in Hokkaido was not that good. We have low angle, deep powder. This board's got camber. It's really meant for steeper terrain and yeah, it doesn't work very well here. Okay, I have a flashback to some footage from the trip I did to Mongolia with Sasaki Akira and friends. Shinya was on the trip. He's a longtime car donchi rider. He also rides for Field Earth and he was using his split board on this trip. We were way out in the middle of nowhere in the Altai mountain range. We spent two weeks in these Mongolian tents and we were hiking the mountains. Uh, some of the guys were on skis and Shinya was on a split board as well as myself. It was quite an adventure. Here's some footage from that trip.
Yeah, I can't tell you how amazing the experience was going to Mongolia with these guys, camping out in these tents for two weeks, eating all this amazing food. I'm going to do another episode at some point just looking back on that trip, but I think uh, you, you kind of got the vibe there. It was amazing. And very cool to see Sheena riding his splitboard in those mountains. Okay, now we are getting into more recent history here. Last year, I bought the Genten Fly Fisk. It's uh, developed in uh, collaboration with Mads Janssen, an amazing uh, Norwegian rider. The Genten Fly Fisk comes with pre-cut and sized skins. I can't tell you how good that is. They are cut and shaped perfectly to fit the board when in walk mode. I really like this feature. We will be right back after this small, 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 small commercial break. Stay tuned. Okay, here is some footage from a video I made with Taro Tamai and his son Temma in the Niseko area. This was actually for their K2 snow surfer boots. Uh, but this day they were both on split boards. We did a little hike off the road, got some footage. It was great fun. So I thought I'd include this in the episode today as it has both of them riding on their uh, split boards. Genten split boards, obviously, designed by the man himself, Tamai Taro. Nice to look back on that footage from a couple years ago. Again, that was Tamai Taro and Temma, his son, riding on their Genten split boards in the Niseko area. Up next, I'm gonna take a little break from the snowboarding for a couple minutes here, and you're gonna get a taste of what my life is like most of the time. We had so much snow this week. Here's what my life is like on a daily basis. Kind of got that deja vu kind of feeling. I feel like I've been here and I've done this before. So weird. It's day two of our big, big storm here. Um, there must be at least another 35, 40 centimeters of fresh snow. Uh, Kashmir wants to go to school, so I gotta get the snow blower going, clear the yard, get the car warmed up. Here we go. Mmm, that's a good coffee. Well, I was able to clear all the snow and get Kashmia, our youngest daughter, to school. Then found out that school was delayed for an hour and it may end up getting canceled today. It's a mega storm, man. There is snow everywhere. The roads are gnarly. It's like you don't want to be out there driving on a day like this. February the 22nd. 
Woo. And I kind of have a feeling I'll be doing it again tomorrow. Right now, you're watching Neil Hartman, Deep in the Snow, Mud. Right now, I've got a brand new little teaser for Korua. They just came out with a video all about their split boards. My buddy's over there in Switzerland. Great design, great brand, and amazing videos, as always. How to get into splitboard touring. My best advice on this is to make friends with other riders who already do splitboard touring. If you can go out on your first trip with riders who have experience, you can learn everything you need to know and get help along the way. You also need to educate yourself on the dangers of backcountry snowboarding and how to deal with an emergency situation. A little preparation can go a long way in a worst case scenario, and you want the tools with you to ensure you and your friends are safe. This is some footage from one of my videos, Kardanchi 7, Nakagawa Shinya again. He was one of the first to adopt the split board. We had all been snowshoeing for many years, and as soon as he got on Field Earth and they put out a split board, he was all over it. And here's some footage from Kardanchi 7. This is the Field Earth Design PED split board that they've had up in their lineup for a while. I took this board to Mongolia, used it quite a bit. It's fantastic. It's a really good riding experience. It was just a little bit small for me, my size and my weight. Yeah, when I have my camera gear and all my stuff on my back, I weigh like 95 kilos. So I didn't get the float and the riding experience that I was hoping for. And finally, we come to the most recent addition to my split board collection. This is the Field Earth Design S1. Boom, boom, boom. This thing is amazing. I think this is the split board that I have been waiting for. The perfect size, the perfect shape, really smooth gliding riding experience. Hard to find anything wrong or bad with this board. I am loving it. The new one, if you look on their website, is a beautiful, like, green color. Graphics, fantastic. I believe it's like a 166 or 167, somewhere around that size. The float is incredible. And there's a tiny little bit of 3D shape. So the edge-to-edge -edge roll is so smooth and so easy. There's no sense of catching an edge or hooking up when you're trying to initiate a turn. It's so smooth rolling back and forth between turns. It feels so good. I would take this board just to go ride at a resort, even if I'm not gonna be split boarding. That's how good it is. Walking with your split board, also known as skinning, can be easy and intuitive for some riders and quite challenging for others. If you have experience with skis, you'll probably pick it up in no time, but it could take some practice if you don't. If you're gonna go out into the backcountry and do any kind of split boarding, you're gonna wanna take a little toolkit like this with you at all times. This is the Spark toolkit. It has all these little screws and bolts in there. Uh, you're gonna need this, because things come loose, things break, Make sure you always have some like extra straps and 
Yeah, it, it can be like a bit of an issue if you're way out in the backcountry and suddenly your bindings break or you lose a screw. So make sure you always carry this with you. Another flashback, this time with a legend in Japanese snowboarding, Masa Takeuchi, out of the Tomamu Cat Tour location. Splitboard bindings are special bindings that are designed specifically for use with splitboards. They can rotate to let you position them in a way that gives you uphill climbing abilities. The heel also comes loose in hike mode to help you climb. Splitboard bindings look like regular snowboard bindings but are made out of lighter materials that help them perform better in the backcountry when every ounce matters. If you want to splitboard, you'll need a solid set of bindings. Once you have your skins attached and your feet in your bindings, it's time to start heading uphill. You lift one foot and the half of board it's attached to, slide it forward, drag your other foot up, and repeat on the other side. have in my backpack when I'm splitboarding is a wire brush. You can pick up a little one like this. You need it to scrape the snow out of your bindings and around the pucks that are on your board. They can get caked with snow and it can be hard to attach the binding. So no, it's not a toothbrush. It's a, it's a wire brush. Okay. Yeah. Get one of these. I use the spark bindings. I think they are the best binding on the market for splitboards right now. Obviously you have other brands like Karakoram and uh, Bollet and there's a few brands out there, but I really like the Spark bindings. They're simple and reliable, good bindings. How to apply skins to a split board. Skins are attached to a split board using loops on the tips, clips on the tails, and sometimes glue. This installation process effectively holds the skins in place while climbing uphill without them coming loose. It also makes them easy to take off when it's time to ride. You should practice applying your skins before you head out to the backcountry, so you know how to get the job done efficiently. Yeah, there it is. Episode 13. That last shot was yesterday. It was so deep. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed looking back on some of my old footage and looking at all my split boards from over the years. That was kind of fun. The new S1 split board from Field Earth is truly amazing. Please check it out on their website if you have a chance. Thanks to everybody who supports the show. Thanks to everyone sending in comments and messages. I got some uh, cool comments on Instagram. Someone said they watched the S-Log and then decided to go snowboarding for the first time in 10 years. Thank you. That's great. I hope I can continue to inspire everybody to get outside, get in the snow, and have some fun no matter what it is you ride or do. Even if it's not winter, just get outside. It's a great planet. Breathe in the fresh air. And that is how you clear snow in Sapporo, Hokkaido. Yeah. I'll be back in a week with another episode As always, keep the comments coming, and uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it.